Welcome to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Hello and welcome to Fresno FC Match Day, the Fox's official pregame show. I'm Nick King. After 11 days off, Los Zorros return to the field Wednesday ends in a scoreless draw. The Foxes do earn a point in Oklahoma City and win the season series against Energy FC thanks to a win in Fresno earlier this season. But the season high three game win streak comes to a stop. Here's a look now at the key moments. Front four Johnson coming back into the lineup after being out. Um... You know, his pace and his ability to stretch games, he, he had such a different dimension to Fresno. And I really, I really like the way that they play and move the ball. Area, both Chavez and Meyer receiving. It's given away. Ribeiro can charge on his options either side. Ribeiro going to slide to Christian Cheney. And well done by Byers, Oklahoma City native to get down to his. Uh, Fresno are playing, should I say, but if, we can get Alec, if they can get Alex Dixon on the ball more. As Rasmussen will strike from a long way out, forcing a brilliant save out of Ray Nish. Out of nothing, a fantastic shot from a long way out from Philip Rath. It's like almost 30 yards, he just takes one touch and as he hits this, the ball doesn't move. You can see he just hits it for a little gap, a little area that they can move through. And it's Kafa into the wall. And it might fall for Ribeiro. Takes a deflection on the way through. And the end settled by Brian By. Here is Padiel charging forward now as Oleski tries to make couple of runs. Oh, They're going to slide in the path of Dixon. What a ball as the shot comes in and coming across well to just put him off there was Camden Febo. Got a piece of it as well and it's out for too many clear cut chances as Dixon gives away. Cuevas going to send the ball over the top towards Cheney who takes it off the chest. He's into the penalty area. Here's Kristen Cheney trying to work around Drew Becky. Pulls it back. Here's Cheney to try and strike and Drew Becky handles well. But he'll show that bit of Class there is a ball slid in the path of Dixon to the edge of the air with Ross. Last four seasons with Sacramento, where current Fresno manager Adam Smith has been. Just a little bit of that connection as the header comes in off the throw in. Cheney directing it towards goal and Byers in the end settling it. Could maybe one of them free up coming around the back post. But Eel with his right. Send this one in, lofted, getting something on it there was Becky towards the back post, hits the top of the bar. And Campton Fellow clears out for you see good, great in swinging from Barrio into the ball here. You see Brecky just rises up excellently and tries to head it back across. But he'll take this corner. There is the Spaniard service. Brown trying to get it on that near post. But he'll might try and play it out. And in the end, that is full time. It finishes nil-nil at the Taft Stadium. We saw a good bit of Kyle Rainish in goal there for the Foxes. Made several nice plays, including that stop in the 26th minute, going up and to his left to keep things scoreless. Let's watch it a few more times. This is the stop of the match. Lad, learning from Del Campo. That's a great experience for him. Rasmussen from distance and Rainish carries it over the bar. Best chance of the night so far, Rasmussen trying to create something out of nothing. Nobody's there, I guess, just trying to get over. Wasn't able to. Rainish had to be really quick to his left to parry that one out for the corner kick. Knock, I think, if Camp could really take things to the next level. Eyes late finding a Wassel with a strike, and it's number 10 on the year. <laughs> what do you know, Kevin Goldblink, as he Wassa now has strike and the game's first goal. Nice for a young fellow, but he does a very good job and he's very technical. Lopez on side, good ball, Cheno Guzman will just roll it in. San Antonio FC on top, 3-1. to Minutes, but going down to 10 was just a bit too far. Fury going forward again, here's a left footed oh. drive and what a shot that is to make it 2-0 Ottawa Fury FC. A left-footed strike. Ty Foster. In for Herrera. Has some time and space. Let's it fly. That is sensational from Herrera. He's got 10 on the season now. He's one behind. And Schreiber. And it's 1-0 Richmond. Great finish from Brent Schreiber. He's done it again from a similar spot. 
Lots of traffic in there. Gets lost. Oh, how about Mizell? He has made some wicked saves tonight. Oh, point blank shot right there. Lee, maybe a chance here for Pittsburgh. Into Brad. Oh, Brad what a save, save again. Kuzminski. Shot from distance. Tambakis with the ball, with the save. Oh, what a save from Tambakis here. Looks like training ground stuff that didn't come off very well. This ball headed in. Important save by McIntosh. Kendall McIntosh with a massive save there. How good is that? Unbelievable save. Route with Texas. Uh, across in front. Header is down and it's kicked away. Herrera, two great saves. Great save there. Tremendous save there. An unbelievable punch away. Reminder, we want to make your fandom of Fresno FC a part of this show. We're searching social media for those hashtags, Somos Zoros, Built for Fresno, and We Are Foxes. We're using these kinds of pictures and videos heading into each commercial break. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. We'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Okay, we've got another one of the Foxes here. We got Bradley Camden Feo. Bradley, you grew up in France and Canada, and France and Canada. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and your earliest soccer memories? My childhood, yeah, we moved between France and Canada a couple of times. And uh, I've always played soccer since I remember anything that's, I've always wanted to play. So at recess or like with my dad, or even my mom, I tried to get my mom in the goal, shoot on her, like any chance I had, I would try to play it, so, so yeah. Why do you think you love it so much? I don't know. I get this feeling, you know, when I, when we win a game or score a goal or something that you want to try, it pulls out, it comes off. You can't describe it. There's just this feeling that only comes from playing soccer. That's, I guess that's what I'm after. Just only that feeling, you know, that's one of the best feeling ever. And you, so you were in Canada and then you went to college here in the States, yeah. went to UNLV, right? Yeah. What led to that decision? How did you get to the States? Uh, actually, my first year I went to a NIA school in Indiana. Then uh, I wanted more of a challenge, so I transferred to, to UNLV just to play at a higher level, to play Division One, And then I ended up working good because we won conference, went to national. So yeah, I don't regret the decision at all. So it was a very good three years. As you've traveled throughout the, the US here, is there a favorite place you've, you've visited or seen? What I like to go best is Vegas, to be honest, because that's where I went to school. Like, all my good friends are there, my best friends there. So, and they have a sushi buffet. So, <laughs> I guess it will be Vegas. Not for the drinking, but. Just the sushi just, buffet. Yeah, yeah, the buffet and my friends. You guys have players on this team from all around the world. Yeah. Who do you like talking to the most? Who do you think has kind of a, a really interesting backstory or life story? Wow, there's a lot. Obviously, Kafa is from Argentina. I lived in Spain. We have the old guys like JJ is from England. I have my friend Zach here. He's from Canada. So like, and we have common friends as well. So you know, we have a bunch of people. Like we have my roommate uh, Raheem. He's from Ghana. Like, anytime you talk to people, they have different stories, and it's cool because we're all from even Mexico, you know, we have so many different backgrounds and we have different ways of thinking of stuff, different ways of uh, seeing stuff. And it's very, it's very, very cool, you know? You learn, I learned a lot 
just from my teammates. If you're not playing soccer and you're not eating food, is there anything, what else <laughs> are you interested in, are you passionate about? I read a lot of books, uh, like autobiographies, that's the word in English? Yeah, autobiographies on people like that I, that I respect and I aspire to come kind of close like, you know? Uh, so I read books, I go on walks, I like to walk a lot, shopping, or check out like some, my clothes, you know, on the fashion websites and stuff like this. So, and I call home a lot also, I'm, all, I'm on the phone a lot. <laughs> like, yeah, I call home a lot, so <laughs> those are things. <laughs> Not too crazy. What are your three favorite autobiographies you've read? Or your very favorite? Zizi Drogba is, for me, one of the best ones I've read because like a lot of his stories I could uh, relate to. Rio Ferdinand as well is very good. Uh, I read Zlatan's that I, re I liked a lot as well. Uh, that was very nice. What else I read? Vardy's was... I wouldn't say I could relate so much to Vardy. I mean, but I think it was very inspiring the way how you just pulled through, you know, you came from so low and you went so high. So I think that was very inspiring. Uh, I read Ferguson's as well. It was not as in didn't, I wouldn't say if it inspired me, but it was, I learned a lot. And you know, when you see players at that stage, you want to be, you want to know what they do different. You want to know what, you want to learn from them. So that was, I learned a lot from Ferguson's biography when he talked about the, the top players. So that was good. We would like to make you, the community, a big part of this show as well by sharing your social media posts from the matches and the hoopla before and after the matches. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Since the Foxes stayed in Oklahoma between games, we weren't able to catch up with Adam Smith, but we did recently have the head coach give us a tour of the Fresno FC locker room at Chukchansi Park. Apologies, the audio isn't stellar. We were having an issue with his microphone, but Adam was great, so I wanted to share it anyway. All right, so here we are in the, uh, in the coach's locker room where um, a lot of uh, discussion goes on, especially at half time when we're trying to uh, figure out um, who's, who to make changes with and, and how we can break down the opposition. Sometimes we've, we put some video up on the, uh, on the TV screen there. Um, this is uh, where we get changed every day on a daily basis as well. And we also get to go out this way to the tunnel, which is different than the players. So uh, we can carry on our conversations uh, as we're walking out. But I'll take you through into the, uh, into the uh, players' locker room and then into the offices and the players' lounge as well. So this was a, a completely different room. Um, the Grizzlies organization were kind enough to let us paint the, paint the locker room Fresno blue. And uh, Mr. Frank Yallop and Mr. Ray Beshoff were kind enough to, to let me um, get hold of a company that could do some graphics on the walls. And I think this is hugely important for any, any soccer club. You'll see we have, this is Fresno. Um, there's a famous soccer team by the name of uh, Liverpool Football Club, who I actually don't like, but um, they have this is Anfield written above their, their tunnel as they walk out. And what the players do at Anfield is they actually touch, touch the sign as they walk out. So we did it slightly different. We've put a Fresno logo there. Winners touch this badge, so the players, if they're feeling confident, slap that badge, and then they head on out to the tunnel through there. Every day they come in here, their kit's all put out for them by Hugo, our equipment manager, who does an excellent job. And um, as you said, there's more, more slogans, believe. Play with heart and this city will love you. That, that was uh, actually uh, sent in by one of the supporters um, uh, at the beginning of the season before it even started. So we, we used that slogan, we put it on the wall. Over there you've got talent counts for nothing without hard work, or talent is nothing without hard work. And um, this little bit is... Uh, a, a sort of a motivational video that we showed the players at the start of the season about what happens with the extra degree of 212 degrees 
you know, what, what the different things that can happen, and we just try and get that extra degree out of our guys every time they step on the field. Um, this is my tactics board. So we'll come in here, we'll put lineups up, we'll put the opposition set up, we'll move things around, we'll show the players. There's other tactics on the other side as well. It spins around and we can put up set pieces and different plays that we're going to do. And then Robert, my assistant, um, does a great job getting the set pieces together and we'll actually plug them in to the TV here. So all the plays that the guys have for corners, free kicks, um, defensive corners and free kicks as well as attacking, um, they'll all be on here and they'll roll before the game so the players will be able to see them and just familiarize themselves with what they're supposed to do during the game. What I'm going to do now is take you through uh, the players' bathrooms and into, um, into the, the training room where they get treatment. Not the biggest of uh, treatment areas, but we make it work. David, our athletic trainer, who does a great job with the guys, he's in here every day. This is his room. We try not to have too many guys in here because obviously if we, we have a lot of guys in here, that means they're not out on the field and we, we don't want that. But any of them that need a stretch or a rub or just some maintenance work, they'll come in here for that as well. Um, but um, this, is, this is a place that we, we, we don't really want players hanging around too much. Walking from here, this is our players' lounge. So this was the original Fresno FC offices when the organization started. Uh, obviously, they have downtown offices now. But every day, the players get the opportunity to hang out in here. We bring food for them at lunchtime um, so they can get some food after they've had a hard day's practice. They can hang out and watch the World Cup games or any, any other games that are on TV. And it's a little social environment. And on game day, there's food brought in the corner there from one of the restaurants that are kind enough to sponsor the team. And the players' wives and girlfriends can come and hang out in here after the game and socialize and wait for the guys to have their showers and come through. And the last, but certainly not least, is, uh, is where Robert and myself uh, put our minds together and hopefully pick the right team on a, on, on a Saturday. Uh, this originally was, was Frank's office, the general manager, but obviously Frank is now at the downtown offices and um, he's got a nice window view now, so he's, he's much better off. But um, I love it in here. It's, it's a good, good football feel, a good soccer feel. You can watch game tape on there on my, on my TV screen. I've got everything I need here, um, calendar for the season. And uh, it's a good opportunity to meet players in here and put them in the hot seat and um, grill them for a few minutes. So um, they don't always like coming in this office, but most of the time they don't mind. The last thing I need to show you, and this is hugely important, okay, probably the most important thing you're going to see. This is the team kettle. Okay, and the team kettle makes good British tea and English tea. So on a daily basis, we can have a nice cup of tea. And as long as I've got some fresh milk in the fridge, we have a nice cup of tea. If the players want to come and have a cup of tea with me or the staff, we sit down, put the world to rights. And if I like them, which I like most of them, I have a little secret stash of British chocolate biscuits right down here, which dip really nicely in your tea. So... So that's it. That is our home. We're very grateful to be here. We love it. And uh, hopefully it's going to bring us a lot of victories. The Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show will be right back after these short messages. Welcome back to the Fresno Football Club Match Day pregame show. This program is sponsored by Tioga Sequoia Brewing Company. Western Conference standings going to look pretty similar up top with only a handful of midweek games. But a change at the bottom of the playoff picture. Fresno FC now in sole possession of eighth and tied in points for seventh. 
Worth noting, the seven through 10 teams are all within a point of each other, so not much breathing room for Los Zorros. Tonight's opponent, Tulsa Roughnecks FC, the second worst team in the West right now. A week from now, Foxes go to Sacramento Republic FC, third match of the Highway 99 Derby. Then Thursday, August 9th, the other direction on the 99 to face LA Galaxy 2, before finally returning home, hosting St. Louis FC on Saturday the 18th. The first Saturday of September, back on the road again at Las Vegas Lights FC. And that is our show tonight. Thanks for watching and enjoy tonight's game. Foxes looking to leave the Sooner State unscathed and keep the four-match unbeaten streak alive. Have I ever told you the legend of Los Zorros? It is a legend, not of size or strength, of fury or fire but one of speed, cunning, and of sheer will. Born to thrive, fearless in battle, always quicker, always smarter, always winning. So tell me, do you have what it takes to become 